Johnny Depp did a character um, who was a famous B-movie producer. And the character's name was Ed Wood, who was a real guy. And um, he made um, really low-budget movies, and they were sort of the horror category. And somehow, these movies got shown in movie theaters in like the 1950s. Ed Wood. And, um, well, if you've never seen the movie, you got to go see this movie. I'm not sure if you can get it. Usually what I do for movies, I got this guy who gave me this um, app. And this app accesses all those um, movie sites, you know, where you can get all the movies. Some people have got set-top boxes. I got this app to run on my phone. And I haven't looked to see if Ed Wood's there. I saw it a long time ago. I don't really watch movies over and over again. Um, what I do is I go find like little trailers and samples from YouTube and... Anyway, Ed Wood um, as cross-dresser. Johnny Depp, um, I think it was a cross-dresser anyway, I'm pretty sure. And um, he did a great job. It's just a great job. So why are we talking about Ed Wood? We're talking about Ed Wood because he just loved to make movies. He loved to make movies and he loved actors. Um, and he didn't, he just made up like run of the mill scripts. And he just loved making them. And what's that related to us? Um, we just love making videos. We just love talking. We just love it. So, um, Ed Wood is our um, hero. He encourages us to continue to make our art, you know, and the whole part of it being art is, it's art. You know, some people say, you know, their YouTube channels are all about psychic readings or reviews or just dumb things or whatever. It's all art and our art is unique. Ed Wood somehow managed to get his movies played in mainstream movie theaters. Ours don't. Sorry about that. The worst thing about YouTube is, you know, you start looking at yourself on, you know, I'm using a camera phone, and sometimes I got like little bits of Kleenex, you know, because I, you know, I got some you know, rough scruff here. And sometimes it'll be like a little piece of Kleenex or toilet paper. I'll be stuck here under my nose and I'll have talked for like, you know, seven minutes. And then I'll notice that there's like a little bit of white stuff right there. You know, and being a man, there's nothing worse than, you know, hair, hair everywhere. And the worst thing for men is when they've got little hairs that are coming out of their nose, you know, little hairs hanging out there. And then it's really bad, you know, with like the quarantine, you know, it's June 2020 and I haven't had a haircut since this quarantine began. And, you know, I had it pretty short and it's still, you know, it's kind of sloppy looking, but it's still, you know, a lot of people wouldn't get their hair cut until it's way all beyond what mine is. But it gets sort of like all like gross at the back. And then, you know, I don't know. You gotta, if you're a hairy person, you gotta have regular haircuts. And then if it's, you know, summertime and it's beach weather, then, you know, you've got hair everywhere. And, you know, it takes you like a whole day to go and like trim off all your body hair because otherwise you look like a big ape on the beach and it's just terrible. Why is it that humans are hairy? Well, it's not true. I mean, some are not hairy at all. And some are middle hairy and some are super hairy. And then the really funny ones are big, beefy Italians 
with hair on the front, hair on their back, and no hair up here. The bearded ladies that used to be in the circus. Harry Knuckles, Harry Balderas. This hat wanted to, um, we say it, it wants to talk. When I put the hat on and then I talk, it's like the hat that's talking. And this hat wanted to talk. Because, you know, like, last night when I was lying in bed, with my eyes closed, this hat, I could see this hat. You know, it's like I have inner vision, and this hat came up. And now this hat doesn't want to talk. I grabbed this hat because we were talking about Ed Wood, and um, it just looked to me like an Ed Wood kind of hat. This is the hat, the name is Dazzle, because it's kind of a Dazzle hat. And Dazzle, Dazzle was World War One camouflage that they put on ships they put all these kind of this kind of stuff on the side of the ships and they didn't have radar in those days so if they were going to go and shoot a torpedo at you they just lined it up and eyeballed it and then they fired off the torpedo at your ship but if your ship had this dazzle it made it hard for you to see the ship and then they would make a lot of smoke come out of the smokestacks and make a smoke screen. And that's how they did their best at avoiding torpedoes in World War One. Anyway, this is just kind of, kind of because Edward was kind of very odd. And we're very odd. This hat we hardly ever wear. It's like, it's heavier felt. And I don't even know what this is. RVCA? Is it like a specialty store? I don't know. It's like RVCA. That's all it says on it. And, you know. As usual, it's made in China. Anyway, it hardly comes out. And I put another shirt that I haven't worn for a long time with a bunch of army tanks on it. And, um, this just looks like a um, wintertime army, army hat. Or whatever. I used to know this guy named Dan. He talks like this, the way I'm talking right now. Last we knew he was in Montreal, Quebec. Um, Dan has played World of Warcraft probably for the last um, 15 years, every day. Dan likes weed. How much does Dan like weed? Um, well, in the olden days, when we used to live in Vancouver, Dan would call me up and he'd say, Bob, um, whatever, he'd just tell me, and I just knew what it was, and it was basically, it was time to go on a mission. So um, I'd go get him, and... Um, he always knew the guy. It wasn't always the same guy, but he always knew. And Vancouver is a huge city. And um, I never knew where we were going to go. He just like, go that way, go that way, go that way. And we'd end up, in lots of the suburbs. And I don't know how we knew all these guys. But he would always find some guy. And then he would get his best bud. El Primo. Unbelievable. 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 Why am I saying unbelievable? Because Dan would bring his bong. It's like, Dan, you can't bring the bong in the car. He'd just look at me and, you know, he was, um, he was very difficult. He was very difficult. He wouldn't take, like, advice at all. That's basically, do you want to get weed or not? 
he wouldn't say that. That wouldn't be his kind of words. He would just look at me and the way he said, you know, my name or whatever. And then he'd get in the car and he'd be like waiting there. And I'm going, I don't want to drive the car with Dan and his pong. And he wouldn't get out of the car. He wouldn't get out of the car. And he's stronger than me. Stronger than me. So what am I going to do? So I get in the car. And then the next thing you know, we're like bombing around town, going to find his man. And Dan's got this bomb. And I'm going, Dan, you idiot. You didn't dump out the bong water before you brought it in my car. And he's like, he's got the bong, a water bong. And it's got dirty, filthy, stinking, nothing stinks like bong water. And he brings the bong water in the bong, in the car. And the car is then all like, it's rough road some places. And that's like, I don't want pong water spilt into my car. So anyway, we'd go see the guy. He'd like he he he'd be like really nervous, right? It's like, okay, so it's like this is the block. And he'd have me like, you can't come in. You don't know this guy, you can't come in. You gotta stay in the car. Fine, Dan. I've been through the routine like about a million times. And it's like you can't park in front of the guy's apartment building. You gotta park like a block away. On this side of the street, behind this car. Don't get out of the car. You stay there. And I just like roll my eyes. I was like, yes, Dan. So then Dan would get out of the car, take his bong and his dirty bong water, and he'd go in and see the guy. He'd go into the apartment. And it'd be like, you know, I'm looking at my watch. I'm looking at my watch. I'm looking at my watch. It's like the first time it's like, did you get lost in there? I mean, seriously. How long is it gonna take you to do this transaction? And then I just got used to it. It's just like, Dan's going to be in there probably for 20 minutes. Finally, he comes out of there. He's still got his dirty bong water, or dirty bong. And um, gets in the car and then we go back to his apartment. And um, I didn't have much time in his apartment. Basically, I would get a cut. I'd have to cough up the money. I would pay for three quarters of the bill. Three quarters of the bill went to me, and I would be lucky if he gave me half. And he would do it. He would, like, give me this little shitty bag, this used little bag, used, used bag. And um, he'd be, like, you know, like taking little nugs. He'd call them nugs. Okay, this is a nice lug. You can have that nug. And you can have that nug and then he'd look at it and then maybe he'd take a little bit out and then he'd look at me to see if, you know, if I was going to be like rolling my eyes or anything. And sometimes I would, sometimes I would say, Dan, I paid for three quarters of that bag and you gave me like one quarter of the bag. And he'd go, yeah, yeah, he'd smile. He'd, he'd get this smile. He'd, he's got these smiley, smiley teeth. And he's like, yeah, Bob, uh, okay, well, and then, you know, he'd even it out more or less. And then um, uh, his computer, it would catch his eye. It's like his computer was always on. And um, he'd like, look at the computer and he'd go, what did he say to me? <sighs> he'd give me like, um, you got to go, you got to go. Like, he'd look at the, the stove. And he'd have one of those stove clocks. And he'd say, um, you got to go in like 10 minutes. You got to go in 10 minutes. So then what would happen? Um, he'd go sit down and he'd start playing Warcraft. And he liked to play um, music with his Warcraft. Uh, he liked acid jazz. So that was it. And it was like, I had 10 minutes to clear out of there. And um, that was my visit with Dan that day. Did you see Dan in uh, Montreal? Tell him to come watch me on my YouTube channel.